The OMVs had to think of new strategies regarding their eviction from Pinerolo. Lanteri's body remained in Pinerolo, and this was a big problem for the Oblates because Lanteri's remains were in Pinerolo, as were those of the first OMV confrères. They stayed there. Burkiala actually bitterly described the day when we were thrown out of the house by the Carabinieri, but he was always among the promoters who would say, We must go back to Pinerolo. We have to go back. While they were in Nice, there was a time that was more fortunate because of the presence of Rector Major Stefano Rossi, who was hopeful, had a constructive vision, was a person who responded to needs, whereas before him is Nardi, who had been good in the beginning, later said things like, we are now approaching the end, we are dying, there's no hope for the Institute. When Father Stefano Rossi arrived, he managed to bring Burkiala back to the congregation. Burkiala had been out for almost ten years. The excuse was that he had a sick brother, which was true, he was really sick, but also he had been out because of an oppressive climate among the Oblates. While out of the institute he wrote a lot of books. This made him famous, and he became friends of Don Bosco and Bartolo Longo. He was highly esteemed. However, he missed the congregation, and after his Nardi died, he decided to re-enter. Stefano Rossi accepted him, and then he came to Nice. During that time, Plenetti also came to Nice, and to note to San Maclou as well, and immediately there was this idea to return to Pinerolo, and they succeeded, using their connections. So they were able to manage churches around what would become the Church of the Sacred Heart. These were small churches. Father Pranetti was among the priests who celebrated Masses there. And then, thanks to the bishop and to a canon, they had the idea of buying the residence where we are now, and the idea of building the church. And then, of course, we have Father Gastaldi, who had a major role in all of this and is a big part of our congregation. He was the godson of Constance and de Maestre. Actually, he had almost been adopted by Constance de Maestre, who in turn was the daughter of the famous Joseph de Maestre, who had been a great writer and a member of the Catholic Friendship. Also, Constance, like her mother and her father as well, had Lanteri as a spiritual director. She knew very well the spirit she wanted to convey to the OMVs. She knew him well. In fact, it was Constance who had contacted Bishop Ray for the OMVs to be approved. She also raised Gastaldi according to the spirit of Father Lanteri. Gastaldi is noteworthy for many things. First of all, he was the first biographer of the congregation. His biography is wonderful. He also did Cotolengo's first biography. He did marvelous work. Not only did he know the spiritual exercises very well, which he had given in Como, but he was also a man of fine culture. When he decided to build the church in Pinerolo, he looked to the architect who was a friend of Giulia di Borolo when he built the church of San Giulia. He said, I want this architect. And he chose this same architect. And so he had the church built in the neo-Gothic style. He had it built and finally, at the beginning of the 1900s, was able to have the relics brought down to the church. The remains of Father Lanteri brought to this church that was dedicated to the Sacred Heart. At the same time, he kept in touch with the wealthy families. He dedicated himself to preaching. He was a gifted writer and did a lot of writing. And then he had contact with the De Maestra family, which helped him financially, so he could buy back Carignano. It is thanks to him that we returned to Carignano, because the De Maestra family lived at Borgo Cornalese, 
not far from Carignano, and the family heirs still live there today. Therefore, he brought about this glorious return to these two places.